So maybe you didn't see, but in a video, I shared an email address for you to be able to send me stories, messages, questions, whatever you want, as long as it was respectful. And to my big surprise, and, and it made me so, so, so happy, some of you actually emailed me. Yeah, I'm just really, really excited. So cool. Okay, we read the stories now. So first of all, thank you so much for those of you who sent an email. I've seen them. I didn't open them because I wanted a surprise. And I'm so, so, so excited to see what you wrote. You know, I've always wanted to be a, a therapist somehow. And this is my way of doing the job of a therapist without any diploma or degree. Maybe it's dangerous actually to do that anyway. Before we start, we have to establish some rules because rules are important sometimes. So first, anonymity. I will change the names to the email address stays open. So if after watching this video, you want to submit your email to, please send it. I will read it, of course. Three respect, send love in the comments. If I'm sharing a story that happened to you too, just comment and send your love and just be positive. I would love that. I'm excited. You have no idea how happy I am that some people trusted me enough to send me emails. That makes me so, so grateful. I almost said the name. <laughs> Is it too late? Well, we'll see. You know what? We all gonna call them Sophie, all right? because otherwise I'm, I'm going to uh, mix the names and that's, that's bad. So, hey Julien, hey Sophie. I think you need to know my dating history to understand the whole story. I'm a bi girl and mostly dated men. Every story in my romantic past ended with them breaking my trust, even if they did not necessarily have bad intentions in the first place. I'm sorry. Some did not mean well, of course. The reasons for breakups always being their problem, I never had to confront my toxic traits. Oh, all right. Last year, I fell in love with this incredible woman who is just the best person I've ever known. That is extremely sweet and you make me want to fall in love again. I mean, for five minutes, I probably will have this wish and then he will die. Love is not for everyone. <laughs> I'm not serious. I have a weird type of humor. Don't take everything seriously. It was all sunshine and rainbows. You're gonna break my heart in this very short email? That is not nice. It was all sunshine and rainbows for a few months. And then when it came to the time to resolve conflict, I ran. Turns out I have a disorganized attachment style and I left even though she wants to work things out. In my head, if I confront things, she'll be upset and we won't break up for now. But inevitably, she will leave, so I might as well do it sooner myself, so it hurts less. I also thought telling someone the deepest darkness secrets is being vulnerable, but the most vulnerable I feel is when I confront someone and I can't go there. Anyway, now that I know the problem, I want to fix it, but it might be too late. Should I talk to her about this and how? Thanks for the safe space, Julian. All right, Sophie. I know it's not your name, so it makes it a little bit less personal, but let's protect your anonymity. In most cases, I am not from those who believe that you can't be with someone if you have to work on yourself. You know, you always hear people being like, oh, we can't be together now, I need to work on myself. I don't believe in this because most of the time when people say that, two months later you see them with other people. So you're like, are you fucking kidding me? You, you worked on yourself in two months and, and now you're with someone else. Maybe it's my trauma that I'm projecting here, but I really think you can work on yourself and being with someone else. In most cases, nothing is black or, or white. So if I read correctly, you think she's great, you love her, and it worked for a while, which is normal. You have a period of around six months, the honeymoon period, where everything is great. And then after the, the six months, it starts to be real. Not that it wasn't real before, it's just the two people are just going to show their real selves. And it's very important that the honeymoon phase disappear because you can't be in the honeymoon phase forever. What, what I'm missing in your email is that, so you said it was all sunshine and rainbows for a few months, and then it, when it came to the time to resolve conflicts, I ran. So you ran because you think she's gonna leave if you are working on yourself, being in the relationship. First, how much did it hurt when you left? Because if I had to guess, 
it hurt really bad if you were in love with her and everything was all right. Second, very obvious, but if you have the opportunity, I would encourage you to seek for help with your dark secrets. Uh, therapy is very good, but I totally understand if you can't afford it. It's very expensive, especially in the US. You also said that she was ready to work with you on it. Um, my advice would be to be very careful on her reasons and to make sure she understands that you are the one that needs to work on yourself. She can be there to support you, but she can't be the one fixing you. She can't be the savior. You know, you, you have this triangle. She can be the hero, okay? You are the hero of your story. No, no one else. To recap everything, I think yes, you can contact her. I'm a huge believer that nothing is too late in life. I think you can always fix things, or at least that you can try. I think it's always worth the price you have to pay. For some people it would be to put their ego on the side, for others it would be to risk being hurt again. I don't, I, I don't know how you feel about reaching out, but maybe you should take it slow. You didn't describe how you left, and I hope you told her what you just told me, that, that it was for those reasons. But in case you didn't, I think it, it would be nice for her to know. But for real, try to take it slow and try to really, really understand how you work in a relationship. Discover the patterns. Why are we arguing on that? Is that because I'm, I'm looking to have an argument because of this problem I have? Or is it a real problem that we have in a relationship with, which, which can, be, can be true? I'm, really, I'm, I'm going very deep, but running away for you was the answer. And in your head, it would be less hurtful than staying and seeing her leave. But you don't know that. Nobody does. Nobody has a crystal ball and can tell which path would be less hurtful. Let me ask you this question. Do you think life wouldn't be better if you could think about your decisions in terms of regrets? What would I regret the most? For a lot of people, it would probably to leave to run away, but I know it's a long process to reach that point where you can actually ask yourself, what would I regret? Answer the question and actually act on it because you have the, the theories in your head and the actions. And also about the confronting part. I understand a lot of people are very afraid about confronting other people for different reasons. I'm sure you have your own reasons, but whatever happens with this girl, you need to be able in a relationship to express how you feel and what's happening. You need to express it in a very calm and non-violent way. That's the way we need to learn how to communicate. If you want, you have the, the book, The Non-Violent Communication. I will link it in the description. But if you, are in a, if you are not comfortable confronting people, a relationship can't work properly because you need to be able to tell the other what you like, what you dislike, and that's the way you grow in a relationship. I think you have work to do on yourself, like anyone else. But I believe in you. Like, you already took a step forward. You, you sent an email that, that's really brave. You sent an email, you ask for help. That's great. That's amazing. I think you're really on the right path to give yourself a chance. That's the most important part. Give yourself a chance to be happy. Because from what I'm reading, I see an opportunity. I see a real opportunity for you to grow tremendously from that. And I think this girl has been put on your path to show you what you need to work on. So take this relationship as a chance, but don't forget, she can't be your hero. And, uh, and thank you again for your trust. Take care and, and please let me know if what I just said helped you and what happened next. Hi, Julien. Hi. Here's my story about being a lesbian. Nothing juicy. Being a lesbian is already juicy. We say lesbian and you come. Here's my story about being a lesbian. Nothing juicy, but I figure this could be a good way to open up and help others who are also struggling with being gay know that they're not alone. Thank you. First of all, thank you for sending the, the email and thank you for saying that. I think it goes a long way to share our stories within our community. I have always known that I like girls since middle school when I got my first crush. But growing up, I have realized that many people think that being gay is wrong. Sorry, Sophie, number three, we have a guest. It was something to be ashamed of. <laughs> I'm going to be really distracted. 
It was something to be ashamed of, and in order to protect myself, I have to hide my attraction for my friends and my family. During high school, I fell for this girl in my class. In a lot of ways, she was someone I wished I could be. She was out, and she never tried to hide the fact that she's bisexual. I've seen her getting stares from my classmates and being judged for expressing her attraction to women, but she never cared. I, on the other hand, was so scared for people to find out. Up to this point, I had only told my closest friends and I've asked her not to tell anyone else. It's already really good that you have been able to share that with someone else. The girl I liked moved away at the end of the year. And as I turned out, she liked me too. Oh no, that's so sad. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Even though we never dated, it took me a while to get over her. Oh, I understand. And I've always wondered what could have happened if I wasn't afraid to be who I am. Fast forward to college, just when I thought I would be able to express who I am, COVID hit. It really wasn't until the end of my college years when things started going back to normal, that I started to make friends with other gay people and became more comfortable with expressing my sexuality. I have since moved back home to my parents, who I am still not out to. I've kissed a couple of girls now, but I still have to get to date one. I've realized that all those years growing up, repressing myself and my attraction towards women have caused me to hold myself back from pursuing other women to this day. I don't have a lot of gay friends to talk about this with, but I hope to find a community who understands my struggles. And hopefully, after moving out, I would finally have a chance to explore and become proud of who I am and who I love. Thank you for creating the space to share our stories. I have mixed feelings about that because I feel really happy to see that you are on the path and find out who you truly are because we are, we are always looking for who we are and we are always evolving. But at the same time, of course, I'm sad. I'm sad because you can't be out right now. Okay, they're making out. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much for sending this email to me. As you said, I think a lot of people can relate to your story, more or less, of course. I don't know if you are coming from a religious family. I, I know for a lot of religious people, coming out is almost dangerous sometimes. I, I don't know what your situation is right now. For example, my parents aren't religious, but, but we never really talked about homosexuality before that. And they are not against gay people, queer people. But the day I told them it didn't go very well and they needed time to understand, to process. And a lot of people are in this case. From what I understand, you are suffering from a kind of like, I, I don't remember what we said, what's the term, but like, which is normal, considering that you, you just pushed back your identity, basically. When you talk about the part of not having a lot of gay friends, if it can make you feel better, the only gay people that I have in my life had are my exes. I am literally surrounded by straight people. It's also why I created this YouTube channel, because I never felt like I needed to be around queer people. But getting older, I realized that yes, I need to because we have some problems in our life that are completely, totally related to the fact that we are queer. So I really hope you can find your community and I, I think you, you are starting to find it. And that's also why I want to, to grow this, this channel because I, once you grow the, the channel, you can do more stuff, you can have meetings and everything. Maybe it will never happen on my channel, but that's really what I'm aiming to because I want people like you, people like me, who have not enough representation around us to be able to talk with queer people, not to find someone romantically necessarily, but just to have gay friends, it's, it's always nice. I think I would just have something to say about your last sentence. You said, and hopefully after moving out, I would finally have the chance to explore and become proud of who I am and who I love. I don't think you need to be out to be completely proud of who you are. I think it's a very long road and I think you are on it already. Same, I, I don't think you need to move out from your parents to be able to explore your sexuality. Of course, I don't know, I don't have enough detail to really go deep on that subject, but maybe go on dating apps. It's already a good start to, to talk with some people and you, you always have, for example, on Hinge, you have like, what do you want from the app? And you can say, 
long term relationship, short term relationship, don't know yet. I think as a queer person, it's very easy to feel lonely, especially if you are not in a big city. And I hope to see that change. But yeah, once again, thank you. I hope you can see that you, you don't need to wait to be proud of who you are. You can already be proud of who you are. And I'm sure a lot of people are in your situation and we can all help ourselves by, uh, by creating this community together. Howdy. Howdy, is that something you say in Australia? It sounds like something you would say in Australia in my mind. Are you Australian? Sophie number four has been going these days pretty well. Thank you. I've been reading some manga Yuri lately. I've been enjoying them as well. Moreover, I've been watching some movies where there are some lesbian couples, etc. There seems to be queer movies, but I'm not sure about that. However, I'm not a lesbian. I've always liked men. <laughs> Sorry, but the fact that you are giving me dates, it's so funny. Okay. However, I am not a lesbian. I've always liked men since 1998 until now, 2024. Thank you. I know which year it is. I'm kidding. Well, I know. I, I know the year, but I'm not. Whatever. Even though I was born into Christian household and I consider myself as a follower, worship God too. On top of that, it seems that I've been questioning myself. A lot of people question themselves. Questioning yourself doesn't mean that you are a lesbian. I may also like girls. Good for you if you do. Because I kind of crossing on them too. Or just because I found them a pretty young ladies. Oh girl, you're not, you're not easy to read. I'm sorry. But they're not exactly the, the same feeling that I have towards men. Sometimes I said that it's cause nowadays everything it seems to be the six stripes rainbow like on social media, TV, series and movies and so on. What are your thoughts about this? I've never been into a relationship but I kissed a guy four years ago. That was my first kiss. P.S. Please be truthful. Thanks. Many thanks. So first you have to understand that TV shows, movies, social media, they are not going to make you become a lesbian, okay? You are born with a sexuality that can evolve, it can fluctuate. I don't know if you are born in 1998, but I, I understand that it must be hard for you, if you are a Christian, to question yourself about your sexuality. I've dated a Christian, girl, I know how the view on gayness. If I'm really honest, I think you need to discover who you are. The, the first thing that, that is jumping to my face right now is the fact that you have not enough experience in your life to decide what you like and don't like it. So I don't know. I don't, I don't want to cross any line. You need to go out and date. Date doesn't mean anything crazy. Just try to meet people that you find attractive. Whether they are men or women, you may discover very fast if you like women or not. Don't, don't stop after one date because sometimes it's just the, the person doesn't match with you. But you know, a lot of person thinking that they are straight actually have the epiphany moments wh when they kiss a, a woman. They're like, that was that all along. <laughs> I think maybe you're asking yourself too, much, too many questions and instead of being in your head, you should be on the field trying s some stuff. Maybe go to a, a gay bar and see how it feels. But, but I, think you, you, I think maybe the answer is already in you. Like, do you find them pretty or do you find them pretty? Mm, you know what I mean? Like, there's a difference. Thank you for your email. I really appreciate uh, if you need anything. I'll be in front of this computer. I'm currently editing the video and it's way too long for just one episode. So lucky you, you will have two episodes knowing that the second one will be very, very juicy. So please stay open-minded. See you on the next episode. And like, subscribe, whatever if you want to.